Hi, I'm Todd Allen Lowe, and welcome to Allen's Pantry. In this segment, and the segments to follow, I'll be showing you how to prepare mise en place to stock your pantry so that you can make healthy, delicious, and nutritious meals for your family and friends at home in a snap. Now, some of you may be saying, what is mise en place? Mise en place is simply a French term that means all of the ingredients that you need to have on the hand to prepare a specific dish or dishes. Now, over the past 20 years, I've been traveling North America seeking out the finest hotels, restaurants, and resorts to work in. Through that experience, I have honed my culinary skills razor sharp. And I've gathered tremendous culinary knowledge in many types of cuisine. Now, if you want to make food at home that tastes and looks like the great food you have in your favorite restaurant, then I'm here to show you how to do it. So, let's open up Alan's pantry and see what's cooking today. So today we're going to be making tuna poke. Tuna poke is in a Hawaiian tuna tartare, but I'm going to put my twist on it, add a little Caribbean island flair to it. So the ingredients that we need, the staples that you can prepare to load your pantry is the poke dressing. This is a very simple dressing with four ingredients. It can be made in advance, hold in your refrigerator for at least a week. Also we have some fresh mango salsa. This item is made fresh can hold overnight, no problem. So again, you can have it made in advance. We have a little chiffonade of lettuce that we're going to use. We're using romaine and radicchio lettuces. Now what is chiffonade? That's another French term for shredded or thinly sliced. We're also going to be using some toasted white sesame and black sesame seeds, fresh avocado, and plantain chips. Again, this, this is something that can be made in advance. You can fry these the day before, hold them in an airtight container, and you'll be good to go. So, let's begin assembling the dish. First we need, of course, sushi grade ahi tuna. Right, we're gonna dice that tuna, okay? Place it in a bowl. We're gonna add our poke dressing. All right, a little sprinkle of our toasted white and black sesame seeds. And we're gonna go ahead and mix that together. Let's hit it with a little touch of fresh ground pepper just to give it a little bite. And I, I can't stress this enough, fresh ground pepper is the only way to go, okay? So we're gonna mix that up. Season that well, very good. Now we're gonna bring our plate over and assemble the plate. Now, for this dish, for presentation purposes, I'm gonna use a stainless steel ring mold. So we're gonna start with putting the chiffonade of lettuce in the base of the ring mold. Next comes our fresh avocado. You want to cut this as soon as, as close as, I should say, to the serving time so it doesn't turn brown on you. Nice fresh avocado. Okay, we're going to cut that avocado. And you'll see if, when you cut it in quarters, the skin easily peels off of the fruit. Isn't that nice? All right, so we're going to dice the avocado. Doesn't have to be a perfect dice, a rough dice is just fine. Okay, we're gonna lay that into the ring mold on top of the lettuce chiffonade, just like that. Now it's important that we kind of pack it down a little bit at this point. So we wanna take a spoon, kind of just pack that in there, nice and tight. All right, now it's time for our tuna. This wonderful tuna poke, 
fresh, ice cold, savory, a little bit spicy. All right, we're gonna pack that in there. Okay, we're gonna pack that in nice and tight inside the ring mold. Now for our mango salsa. Very refreshing, a little bit spicy from the jalapeno. We're just gonna lay that on the plate. Just like that. Now for the plantain chips. We're gonna bring those over, set them right on the plate like that. Give it some nice height. And now we're gonna remove the ring bolt. And there you have it. Now the plantain chips can be a little tricky. You wanna fry them in 350 degree oil. And as you see, some of the chips I turned around into a little cup as a vessel to put the chips in. So it really gives the plate nice height. The presentation is spectacular. Now, if you would like some extra presentation, a little more pizzazz, you could take some of the mango salsa and put it right in the center on top of the poke, right? Now, the mango salsa is important with the ripeness of the mango. I'd say it's similar to the ripeness of an avocado. Just enough pressure you can press in, but not too soft. Otherwise, when you try to dice it in such beautiful knife work like this, it's going to mush up and kind of not have the same kind of presentation on it. We also want to talk a little bit about this, this dressing, the four components in here, the sweet soy, the sambal, grated ginger, and lime zest. Now, the reason I don't use lime juice, the lime juice will tend to start to cook your tuna poke, and you're going to lose that vibrant freshness to it. The other thing that I would love to explain to you is this chiffonade that we're making in this dish as well. That you want to try to make as close to service time as possible. Because as you know, cut lettuce is going to turn quickly on you. So if you want to get results like this, just follow my recipes, follow the procedures. It's really not hard. You can do it. Pecan Ridge Plantation pecan oil is great for sautéing or grilling seafood. It's even excellent for pan searing a steak. Use Pecan Ridge Plantation pecan oil for all your cooking and oil application needs. The product is 100% natural. Their oil is cold pressed which means no heat or harmful chemicals have been used. It has a very high flash point of 470 degrees making it ideal for frying or heating up to high temperatures. Great to use on salad dressings, for sautéings, marinating, seasoning, grilling, and even baking. It can be used as a butter substitute. Use as you would on any other oil. Light buttery nutty flavor that does not alter the flavor of the dish tremendously. However, it simply complements the other ingredients which is being used and adds moisture and richness to the recipe. Pecan Ridge Plantation Pecan Oil has less saturated fat than olive oil, only 7% compared to 14%. It's high in vitamin E and monosaturated healthy fats. There's no cholesterol or sodium, no oily aftertaste, very light and clean flavor. So for the next time you're thinking about using a quality olive oil, lean towards Pecan Ridge Plantation Pecan Oil. And for more information, log on to PecanRidgePlantation.com. Okay, so for our next dish, we're going to make something very simple. It's Latin inspired. It's a Latin steak and french fries, if you will, but we're going to be using yuca root, also known as cassava. Makes a very nice accompaniment with our skirt steak, which we've marinated with mojo marinade. Now, what is mojo? Mojo is a sour orange uh, dressing. We use fresh squeezed orange juice and lime juice com combined together to make the sour orange. It also has cumin, fresh chopped garlic, a little canola oil, salt and pepper. Another item that we're going to be using is chimichurri, which is another Latin condiment often used on beef. It's oregano, cilantro, a little red chili flake, and garlic, touch of oil. 
great condiment to go with the steak. To pair with the yuca fries, also known as cassava, I have pickled onions. This is really simple to do, guys. It, all it is is thinly sliced onions, fresh squeezed lime juice, a little touch of salt, and a touch of vegetable oil. Can't be simpler than that. Something that you could make in advance, you could hold this in your fridge for a week. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the skirt steak. Not everyone is familiar with that cut. Skirt steak is a rather inexpensive cut of meat. Uh, it's a very thin cut of meat, so it cooks very quickly. You want to have very high heat. My best option that I would give you for this is cook it on an open fire grill outside, really hot, at least 450 degrees, because you want to get a sear on this, get a nice crust on both sides, but you certainly don't want to overcook it. About medium rare to medium is best. The other thing about this cut of meat is the manner in which you slice it is going to determine how tender it is. You can see the grains of the meat are running in this direction. So when we have this cooked and ready to serve, we're going to want to slice it opposite of the grain and on the bias. This will make for a tender cut that will just melt in your mouth and the flavor is going to be fantastic. So let's start by, we want to season the meat before we fire it. Remember, there's some already some seasoning in the marinade, so we don't want to over-season it. We're just going to give a little touch of kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper. And again, I can't stress this enough, fresh cracked black peppercorns is the only way to go. Don't use that table grind pre-ground stuff you buy in the store. This is the ticket. Okay, so let's season the other side of this. A little salt. A little pepper. Okay, now that's ready to go on the grill. But before we put it on the grill, I'd like to explain about this, this yucca root. This is probably gonna take at least as long, if not maybe a little longer to cook than the steak. So we're gonna to wanna to fire the yucca first, and then we'll put the meat on the grill. Now, the chimichurri, another key to this is I use lime zest as opposed to lime juice. You'll find many recipes that use lime juice. The lime juice will start to attack those bright green vegetables and it's gonna to start to turn it gray. So I use the lime zest. Still gives it that citrus flavor, but it keeps it nice and bright green. So let's go to our cooking station and see if we can get some hot temperature here and get this steak on the grill. Mother Earth products are a delicious variety of foods that are dry. Mother Earth's products can be taken anywhere, on vacation, activities, world travels, the cellar, the basement, the kitchen table. Hey, why not stock up on all these dried foods and put them in your cabinet? Choose from any one of their varieties, like beans, dried vegetables, entrees, freeze-dried fruits, freeze-dried vegetables, food storage supplies, grain, cereals, and mixes, and a whole lot more. Mother Earth's products are perfect to store foods later and then use them at a certain period of time by rehydrating them in water or your favorite stock mixture. For more information about Mother Earth's products, log on to MotherEarthsProducts.com. All right, so let's go ahead and fire our yucca. We want 350 degree oil, right? Place that in the oil. Be careful because there can be some water with this vegetable. And you want to drain that excess water off so you don't get popping of the oil flying at you. We'll stir that around a little bit. Let that get nice and crispy. In the meantime, we've got our nice hot pan for the skirt steak. You want to get this nice and smoking hot. What you want to hear when you throw this in the pan is that nice strong sizzle, searing sound. I'm trying to get a little bit of a crust on this and again, keep it medium rare to medium. And here we go. 
That's what you want to hear. You want to hear that nice sizzle, that strong saute. We're going to cook that for about 90 seconds. Give it a little turn. We're going to check on our yuca. See how that's doing. It's coming together nicely. Yuca is a very dense vegetable. It takes time to get it nice and fluffy, tender inside. So it's not like a french fry, not like a potato. It takes a little extra cooking time. You know, I have a lot of Latin influence in some of the restaurants that I've worked in. Worked with some Latin chefs and I really find the flavor profiles that they put together very interesting. Really gives a unique flavor to your palate and it's unusual. Not everybody is uh, familiar with this type of cuisine. So this recipe will definitely be a winner for you. Let's go ahead and turn that over. And again, I would love to do this outside on your barbecue grill. Get it nice and hot, at least 450 degrees. The flavor is going to be a little bit better. And you're not going to smoke up your kitchen and you're not going to make a mess. All right, so our steak is cooked perfectly now. Let's get that out of the pan. You want to get it out of the pan right before it gets to its cooking point. It's going to carry over cook a little bit. So you want to make sure to, one, Give it time to rest, right? When I say give it time to rest, what happens is when you're cooking the steak is you're forcing all the juices into the center of the steak. As you let it rest after the cooking process, those juices will redistribute back throughout the steak, making for a juicier steak. So just let it sit and hang out for a few minutes. Don't want to cut into it right now. Let's go over to our yuca fries. They look just about ready. We can pull those out now. Nice and golden brown, crispy. And once again, you've got 350 degree oil here, so be very caref careful. You don't want to splash that on yourself. Get those out of there. Now, as soon as they come out of the oil, it's important. We want to get some seasoning on them right away so it'll stick to them. So let's hit them with a little salt, right? A little fresh cracked pepper right away. Right, use a little paper towel underneath to dab up that excess oil. We don't want that oil to make it to the plate. So, let's grab a plate and let's put this together. All right, set that aside. Bring our beautiful skirt steak over. It's rested nice. Now, what I would suggest with the steak since you have such a long cut and we need to cut it this way, to ease that process, what I would do is cut the steak in half lengthwise like this, okay? Now, again, the grains of this are running in this direction, all right? So what we wanna do is cut in the opposite direction on the bias. This is gonna make the steak tender. So let's go ahead and cut the steak nice and thin. All right, get that. Next piece over here, on the bias, nice and thin. It's gonna make for a tender steak. All right, so let's place it on the plate. Right? And I always like to open it up a little bit, open up those slices so your guests can see that that's cooked absolutely perfect. All right, so now for our yuca fries, we're gonna bring those over to the plate. Gather those up. Transport them over onto your plate. And with the yuca fries, I kinda stack them up in opposite directions, you know, to give the plate a little height. Right? And then stack them like that. Okay, now comes our pickled onions. Again, very simple recipe, four ingredients, can be made well in advance. Hold it in your fridge for a week. 
You can use it multiple times. So we'll take those pickled onions, put them right on top of the yuca, right like that. Okay. And lastly, our chimichurri. Again, this is a Latin condiment made with cilantro, oregano, a little fresh garlic, chili flake, and a touch of canola oil. So that we want to lather right on top of that steak. Right? Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? And so simple. Such a simple dish, easy to prepare, and it's quite economical as well. Enjoy. Solio Family Oils are all natural with no chemical additives made from seeds that are 100% non-GMO. Solio Family utilizes an expeller press process rather than a chemical process to extract the oil from the seed. First canola oil introduced to the southeast that has been grown by local farmers in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, and Kentucky. It is 100% free of any contaminations with no GMOs. There is a growing demand by consumers for both local and non-GMO products. Solio utilizes an expeller press process rather than a chemical process to extract the oil from the seed. There are no chemical additives and the shelf life is one year. You can choose from a variety of different flavors. Sunflower oil, extra virgin, canola oil. All of them can be good for cooking with high temperatures, frying, or just drizzling over a salad as a cold pressed oil. So the next time you're looking for a quality oil without the GMOs or no preservatives, check out soliofamily.com for more information about this incredible oil product. Okay, so for our next dish, I'll be preparing a vegetarian dish that I call eggplant roulade. Roulade is another French term that simply means rolled. As you can probably tell by now, I'm classically French trained early in my career, and I carry those terms and techniques with me everywhere I go. So, to start this dish off, we're gonna have some eggplant fillets. Now, these eggplant fillets, for this particular cooking procedure, I slice them about an eighth of an inch thick. They're breaded with savory herb breadcrumbs and lightly fried. Now, for those of you who are trying to stay away from gluten, or perhaps you say, I really don't want my eggplant fried, there's another alternative that we can do to prepare this dish. As you see, I sliced the eggplant about an eighth of an inch thick, lengthwise with the vegetable. We can slice it about double the thickness, quarter inch. We can dress that with some olive oil, some savory herbs, salt, pepper, maybe a touch of garlic. Throw it on your grill. It'll cook very quickly on the grill. A minute and a half or so on each side, and you're good to go. The other components of this dish that you can make in advance is the sherry vinaigrette. It's a very simple, basic vinaigrette, finely diced shallots, little Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, a nice extra virgin olive oil. Now, this is not an emulsified vinaigrette. It's a very loose, broken vinaigrette. That's exactly what we want. The other component we have is melted leeks. Now, when I say melted, it's a very simple process. But first, you gotta be careful with the vegetable. Leeks usually contain sand or dirt in between the layers of the vegetable. So you'll want to split that vegetable, slice it thin, place it in a bowl of cold water and agitate it. The leeks will rise to the top of the water and all of the dirt and sand will be in the bottom. If you simply skim the leeks off the top of the water, set them aside, and then we're going to sweat those in a medium heat pan with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, gentle heat. We don't want to put any color on it, leave them nice and bright and vibrant like that. We're gonna use also some fresh goat cheese in this dish, fresh arugula, penciled asparagus, and roasted red pepper. To garnish the plate, we've got some red beet reduction. And this is a very simple technique as well. Fresh red beet juice, reduced down in a pan to about one eighth of its original volume. Of course, we have fresh cracked pepper and kosher salt that we're gonna season with. So, Let's start by putting the dish together. We're gonna to take our eggplant fillets, lay those out on the board. You wanna have the second eggplant overlapping on top of the first, okay? We're gonna take our simple sherry vinaigrette. We're gonna dress our arugula. Okay. 
All right. We're going to throw in some roasted red peppers and our melted leeks. Okay, so let's set our vinaigrette on the side, give us some room on the board so we can plate this up. We're going to take our salad, toss that with the vinaigrette, with the roasted red peppers and the melted leeks. Let's add a little fresh cracked pepper. Not too much pepper because arugula can be peppery enough by itself at times. Pinch of kosher salt. Okay, toss that together. Nice, fresh, vibrant greens. We're gonna lay that salad right on top of the eggplant fillets. Okay, kind of lengthwise, not all the way to the ends. All right. There we go. Now we're gonna add our goat cheese. This is a soft goat cheese. You just wanna crumble a little bit right on top of the salad. That should be plenty. Okay. Now we're gonna take our asparagus spears. We're gonna lay those in in the opposite direction. All right? Just like that in the center. Now comes the roulade part. We're going to roll it. Simply take your fillets and roll them, roll them, roll them up all the way down. And the seam part you're going to put down on the plate so it holds together. So let's bring over our plate, put this together, and lay that right in the center of the plate. Now we're going to take a little bit additional sherry vinaigrette. We're going to kind of drizzle that around the outside of the plate. And then our fresh red beet reduction. We're just going to put it in a squeeze bottle so that we can kind of drip it around the outside of the plate. Just like that. All right, so here we have eggplant roulade. And this is an excellent dish if you want to add a protein to it. Perhaps you want to give it a little more flair. We can always take a little bit more of the roasted peppers and garnish it on top. Or perhaps you want to add a protein. A little grilled shrimp would be beautiful with this. But again, this is a healthy, nutritious, and delicious dish that you can make at home. You can do it. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Simonero with Taste This Television, here to talk to you about Accelerator Hand Dryer. You know, keeping up with hygiene, washing my hands, and making sure that there's no transfer of bacteria is important for me and Taste This TV, which is why I rely on a machine like Accelerator to dry my hands. It's efficient, it's strong, and it's powerful. And it only uses up electricity and energy when you put your hands under and take them away. So for drying my hands in the kitchen, I rely on the Accelerator to handle all of those needs. For more information, log on to the website at the bottom of the screen. So let's review the dishes we prepared today in Alan's pantry. We started off with our tuna poke, Hawaiian tuna tartare, with a little Latin island flair. We also did the skirt steak with mojo marinade, chimichurri, crispy yucca fries, and pickled onions. The third dish we did, the vegetarian dish, the eggplant roulade, is a wonderful vegetarian item. But again, you can always add a protein to it just to round out the meal. Now these are affordable, easy to prepare items that anybody can do at home. You too can prepare restaurant quality food in your home. I'm trying to be here to make it easy for you so you can have your mise en place set in your kitchen. So you spend less time in the kitchen more time with your family and guests. It's not hard, it can be done very easily. Simply go to the website, follow my recipes and procedures. They'll guide you step by step on how to build the mise en place to have it on the hand so that putting the items together is one, two, three. I'm Todd Allen Lowe of Allen's Pantry. Thank you for watching and bon appetit.